welcome, welcome, Robinette. Okay, I guess I guess we can begin. Three minutes past one. I guess that's a enough time for folks to tune in. So yeah, let's begin. Welcome to okay, hold on, let me go over the previous slide. Yeah. Welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. We're gonna have a cool little workshop about Sentry versus Crash Lytics. We're gonna do a deep dive. We have a demo ready for you. We have we have a lot of goodies. So I hope you have time uh, and I hope you have fun during the workshop. So let's introduce the workshop team. Uh, we'll start with me. I'm Lazar Nikolov. I'm in the developer relations team here at Sentry and I'm tuning in from Toronto, Canada. And we have Oscar. Hey, Oscar. Hey, Nasa. Good to be here. Thanks for the invitation. All right. Thank you. Next, we got Zoe. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Zoe. I'm a product manager here at Century. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. And we have Simon. Hi, everybody. Um... I'm a solutions engineer at Sentry. Been here for about a couple of years. Previous to this, I was in professional services and yeah, I'll be doing the demo later in this session, but happy to be here calling in from San Francisco. Awesome, awesome. All right, so a uh, quick housekeeping before we dive into the workshop. Uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna use the Q&A section here in Zoom for questions and answers. Uh, we can, uh, use the chat for chatting purposes but at the end we're going to have a Q&A and we're going to mostly source the questions from the Q&A section so instead of the chat use the Q&A uh, so that, that way you can make sure that we're going to answer your question of course we're going to record this event and we're going to send you the recording at the end when we uh, pub uh, publish it on YouTube and at the end we're also going to uh, prompt you for a quick little survey so of course if you have two minutes of your time after this uh, workshop ends, we're gonna appreciate it if you tell us what you think and how we can optimize. So the agenda for today is we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna see a crash lytics versus Sentry at a glance. We're gonna talk about the differences and similarities. And we're gonna do a product deep dive. Um, again, a Sentry demo after the product deep, uh, deep dive. And we're going to uh, talk with Oscar uh, about his spin tennis app. At the end, we're gonna have uh, a few minutes, I think like 10-ish minutes on uh, on a Q&A. So any questions that you might have, we're gonna try and answer it as much as we can. Okay, so I'm going to bring up Zoe to give us the presentation. Cool. Um, so to start, let's talk about building applications. Um, applications don't actually exist in isolation. Um, you've got your databases, you've got your third-party services, your internal or first-party services and tools. So in many cases, a business will actually even have like a website and a mobile app to maximize their convenience or their outreach. So this is at a glance how Sentry covers all the bases from the native mobile uh, frameworks, Android and iOS, all the way to cross-platform frameworks like React Native and Flutter, um, to your front end, your back end, uh, full stack development, including React, Next.js, as well as Python. Um, so we at Sentry, uh, without making it sound like too much of a pitch, Sentry's goal is to help you reduce the time spent identifying and troubleshooting problems with your code so that you can go back to building product and expanding your business. And so starting from the left, we can help resolve your hair on fire issues like crashes and handled and unhandled exceptions um, with error monitoring. Then we go into identifying poor API calls or slow database queries with performance monitoring. We can even help you monitor your release performance uh, with metrics like release adoption, crash free users, and ANR rate. Um, our discover tool, our, our built-in BI tool um, can help you slice and dice across your samples by any parameter that your business cares about, whether that be URL, uh, region, device, et cetera. Um, and then finally, you can plug Sentry seamlessly into your existing workflow with any of our 40 um, ecosystem integrations. So that's things like Jira, Slack, GitHub, and most recently, Discord. 
Um, so as mentioned before, Sentry is a tool made for developers by developers. We support 85 platforms today that span across front-end, back-end, and mobile, and gaming. Um, with plans to continue expanding um, along the bleeding edge of development to hone in on mobile, we're constantly working to build alongside the advancements made by Meta, Apple, and Google so that you get the best insights on your application's performance. For mobile developers, we understand that Firebase, the Firebase suite is the one-stop shop for application development, especially in mobile. Um, the product range is actually suited to getting you off the ground and helping you get started. The question that we want to pose here is what happens when you've outgrown the training wheels, per se? Um, when you've evolved past the initial phases of development and need to see human-readable stack traces? When your customer base is so vast that you need to be able to filter for a specific subset of issues. Um, when your team has gone uh, beyond picking issues off a backlog. So this is where Sentry comes into play. In our product deep dive, we'll be going over how Sentry is the tool that can grow with you and your business, drawing from examples across Sentry and Firebase Crashlytics specifically. Um, so we'll be going over three chapters or stories, um, if you will, in this deep dive. So the first is context and insights, getting you from the necessary level, uh, sorry, getting you the necessary level of information um, to understand and solve your issues. Second, the workflow. So from alerting to workflow integrations, helping you streamline your issue resolution and collaboration. And lastly, innovation and scale, Sentry's ongoing dedication to improving and expanding your product investment, all while being open source. So let's talk about data. Context is literally everything. Knowing that your application crashed on an iPhone 15 versus knowing that your application crashed on an iPhone 8 can cause you to think twice about the severity of a specific issue. Um, with Sentry, we want to make it easy for you to get the essential information. Your code stack, and specifically your code stack, um, and any additional information to help you prioritize your issues out of the box. With features like screenshots, advanced filtering, source map support, we want to make getting and seeing the information simple. So to start, Having keys, logs, and some metadata is all helpful, but the most fundamental piece of information you need for any issue is being able to correlate what happened to, co um, to code level insights. So Oscar, um, I know we've talked about this, but you've worked with Sentry and Crashlytics before in the context of React Native. What are one or two of your main takeaways from your experience? Right, so I mean, for us, it was kind of a no-brainer at the time. I think it was 2020, early 2020. So basically, we were just not getting the information that we needed at the time with Crashlytics. And um, I had to, you know, uh, we were a very small team. I had to do a quick search, just something that worked out of the box. And I tried Sentry and it worked. So basically, that's that's as simple as that. Uh, I was able to see, you know, the the the, the JavaScript errors right there, which is exactly what, what we needed. We had... You know, we have, you have to understand a little bit of a background. We have we came from like almost zero visibility to the visibility because I I that was when I joined uh, Spin um, uh, to work on Spin. Uh, uh, that's when I partnered with my co-founder. Uh, Spin was around for some time before, so it was a bit of a mess with you know uh, consultants working on it, and so with zero visibility to this visibility it was a big game changer and. Uh, and I, I I was trying to be a bit fair when you when you folks invited me here and I searched a little bit of how has that changed since, and it seems like it's gotten better, but it does seem like it's it, it is a bit of a pain that I don't want to go through. So it, I'm happy with you know being able to just see directly the the JavaScript and just do the build on Android. I had uh, some trouble with Android at the beginning. Now that's sorted, so it's very just it's it's very uh nice to see it all uh just just do the build uh push it and then you get all the information there oscar thanks for kind of sharing your take um as you touched on instrumentation is often complex and messy um so what we've tried to do is to automate that process as much as we can um so that you can see your unminified code stack across all mobile frameworks as soon as you get your first error um 
included with our auto instrumentation are additional features like screenshots, breadcrumbs, which is our version of logs, and tags. In an effort to make things even more actionable, we've introduced suspect commits, which is where Sentry tells you the last commit that had the potential to cause a given error. Um, going into, like, as your business is scaling, you will undoubtedly encounter more customers, more edge cases, more parameters. Simply put, you'll be encountering more. And you will eventually outgrow what is a pre like an, a select number of preset filters and search parameters. With Sentry, advanced search and filtering capabilities allow you to drill down to the exact subset of errors you are interested in, whether that be for a specific type of error, that's crashes, exceptions, performance issues, um, across multiple projects simultaneously, Android, iOS, React Native, or custom tags. We wanted to build a function that would scale with your business and expanding developer needs. So I love what you've talked about so far, and especially the features like the suspect commits and everything. But what can you tell us about the the workflow? So in terms of workflow, which is chapter two here, um, I wanted to highlight how simple it is to integrate Sentry into the ebbs and flows of your existing routine. So from how you receive notifications to issue assignment to dashboarding and third-party uh, productivity tools, Sentry aims to make these issues as accessible to you without drastically changing your day-to-day. -day. When starting out, Having preset filter or sorry, preset alerts is actually great because it can actually draw your attention to issues that you may not necessarily be aware of. New issue types, issues that are trending with your customer base, et cetera. However, when you do get to the point of your business where issue bears where not every issue bears the same level of severity, preset filters end up crowding up your news uh, your alert feed, let's say. So this is where customization or customizing issue alerts to your needs, like if an exception happens a thousand times in the past four days, or if a certain transaction duration exceeds a specific threshold, um, this is this can be essential to reducing noise and alerting to alerting you to what you care about most. The same concept applies for issue assignment. Starting off, your business is everyone on your team. Um, as a startup, it's good, if not essential, for everyone to know the issues cropping up in your product. As your team grows, though, it's not expected that everyone will be working on the same project or even on the same framework. So being able to assign issues and target alerting to a select group of individuals helps maintain focus and accountability across the entire organization. Um, to better integrate your in your day-to-day, the devil is actually in the details. So spending time logging into your account every time you've been notified by a third-party application or integration like Ops Genie or PagerDuty is less than ideal, especially if that hinders you from actually getting the latest and most up-to-date information. Providing two-way integration such that you can hook into your existing uh, productivity tools like Jira uh, makes it easy for you to continue with your day in the fewest clicks possible. And what I mean by two-way integration is that you have the ability to update your productivity tool through Sentry and vice versa. So if you were connected with Jira, you could update your Jira status, sorry, you could update your Sentry status via Jira. Um, so information and updates actually go both ways. Another detail that we considered is that developers often monitor BI tools, dashboarding tools, um, to get an overview of their application health. This information should be instantly accessible to you on the platform. Across our querying and dashboarding features, there is no need to import or export any specific data set to create application health views. In fact, these capabilities are actually hooked into the information that you send into Sentry and be queried directly without any concerns over data quality, data corruption, or even just loading the wrong file. So that's that's the gist in terms of workflow. We try to make sure that Sentry is integrated without you having to lift too much. Awesome. That that pretty much encapsulates all the processes that I 
have experienced uh, while being a software engineer previously. So that's awesome. Thanks, Zoe. Uh, how can it scale, though? How can we take Sentry to a, to a certain scale? So this is actually probably my favorite section, largely because this is the area that I work in. Um, so Sentry's mobile developers are actually incredibly cognizant of what's coming out next. And to, reiter to reiterate kind of what I said at the top, Sentry is a tool for developers built by developers. Um, we're working around the clock to ensure support for the global community of developers by being vendor agnostic and better, um, more secure and provide, sorry, and providing better, more secure and faster access through our new EU data residency. So what does this look like? Crashlytics is a tool within the Firebase uh, suite, which is a part of an even larger Google ecosystem. True to larger corporations, they will continue to invest in creating an internal feedback loop for you to build a dependency on their set of products. So specifically for Android developers, this is great for you because that means you get more integrations with Android Studio and Google Play. But when you're talking about the global community of developers, we're talking literally from, you know, iOS, Android, Ionic, Capacitor, um, Flutter, React Native, all the way out to Unity. We're at Century, we're focused on advancements that better, you know, the technology that you guys use and need. This means investing across the spectrum of mobile uh, mobile frameworks, all of which I just named, um, with our newest investment being Kotlin multi-platform. Um, this also means better crash reporting, better performance monitoring, better support for new UI frameworks like Jetpack Compose and Swift UI. And because we are independent, we move at a faster rate. Um, we can provide full coverage from alerting to monitoring to context for complex mobile issues like ANRs and app hangs, and we're constantly pushing out new advancements. Being vendor agnostic allows Sentry to meet developers where they're working and with the tools that they are using. Um, at the top, we talked about how many integrations we have. We have 40, dozens of them. Sentry makes it easy for you to securely see your data where you need to see it without any hidden costs. And so, this is us really just saving the best for last, which is you can actually try out Sentry for free with our developer plan. Um, and it's honestly actually such a steal how much you can get for free. Um, we are strict believers of building in the open. So even if you're just trialing, if you had any feedback on our free product, um, or if you're an existing user and have any feedback on our product, you can find us on GitHub, you can find us on Discord, um, and you can share your thoughts. And more often than not, you are communicating directly with the developers, as well as myself, um, people on the team actually working on the product. And so actually, Oscar, I'm going to throw it to you again. Um, we've previously talked about how you came across Sentry. So do you want to share kind of your experience with the audience here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would 100% encourage you folks to not get rid of the developer uh, tier at the free pricing part and i mean that's essentially how how uh, we came to use sentry you know like we were very small it was 2020 pandemic hit and no one uh was out playing so we were completely focused on okay let's let's fix some of the issues that were ha that, that the app was having um and you know quick search what works what doesn't and we were actually able to survive on the on the free tier for a while and it was only at you know after we okay we started uh growing we started seeing you know uh, i think you you uh, I'm, just, I'm not just saying this i think you all have a generous quota like it was it wasn't easily filled um if if, if you if you don't have a crazy amount of, of issues which you shouldn't have <laughs> when you have a product it won't it won't fill out uh it won't fill up uh, very easily um and then yeah we, we 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 decided it was working for us and that's when we you know we switched uh, to obviously uh, a different uh, a different tier, but yeah, I mean for us it was it was just the okay we have crash analytics. It's not this part is not working for us. What's something that we can try? And immediately we get something you know like opens the door and okay let's stick let's stick with this and uh, it's just no, there's no way like we could have done that without you know 
the, we were not at a point where like okay let's invest in in this really big thing because of the size of our team so yeah it was just, it was very important to us in in fact this is like a risk free investment in your application effectively exactly <laughs> yeah um so yeah this is this is just a quick run through in terms of like how Sentry is the tool for you if you are growing beyond kind of your initial needs. I'm sure, you know, Lazar and Oscar will go deeper into a particular example, Oscar's spin tennis app, um, and how he used Sentry there. So in that case, I will pass it back to Lazar. So Oscar, thank you for making it clear to us. This was a this was really awesome. Of course. Yeah. So we got uh we got a slide about comparing the return of investment, right? The the ROI. Uh basically, yeah, one crash could cost up to 4600 for every 100 users. That's plenty. As uh, 62% of the users will uninstall an app if, if they experience a crash, freeze or experience another error. Uh you got to do something about that. We're not talking about Pebbles and peanuts, right? <laughs> uh, one crash could also cost up to like eleven thousand uh dollars for like every hundred users. Uh, again, pretty big uh, pretty big uh impact if you ask me. And of course, yeah, with one crash per week and one extra hour spent involving a crash, it could result in more than a full week of developer time spent on fixing crashes per year. You want to avoid that. You don't want to spend more than a full week just to fix that. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you, guys. Uh, I want to bring out Simon to give us a demo that he prepared for us today. Sure thing. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen and stop other screen sharing. So I'm just going <laughs> to do that. Go for it. All right. Yeah. So hello, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Simon Zong. I'll be going over uh, a little bit about Sentry and how you can use that, uh, use Sentry to solve problems in your mobile application. Um, what I have in front of us is, and I'm going to put on my end user hat for a moment, is I've got an Android device and I've got an application, an e-commerce app that I want to use. <laughs> so here we have a bit of a slow startup, which is kind of annoying as an end user. But just to sally forth, I'll add a few items to my cart. It's a little small in resolution, but uh, I'll go ahead and check out. So here is a couple problems that as developers, we want to avoid uh, from happening. So this checkout failed, and that's an explicit error. It's one of those $4,600 expenses, as uh, Lazar was talking about. So we want to avoid those things from happening from our managers, you know, yelling at us or directors breathing, breathing down our neck. Uh, as an end user, I'm not happy and I'm happy to share that explicitly in this user feedback form, <laughs> but I'll go ahead and submit that. As a developer, uh, we are notified of these problems and can go through a Sentry workflow to solve these types of things. Uh, we've got Sentry set up on this application and we're notified via Slack. And this is uh, in the form of alerts that were set up previously. And we can click into these um, notifications to take us straight into the Sentry platform. So we've got a couple problems that we'll investigate. The first is the slowdown that we experience at the app start time. And another is that checkout operation. So let's click into the, the, the backend API exception, this that was linked uh, via Slack, right? So here we have the who, what, when, where, and clues on why this error happened. Uh, some of the features that we're going to take a look at were already mentioned by Zoe, but just to highlight them again here for us uh, in this view, we have our screenshot side of things. Our user feedback form does relay that information and visible to us in our with our developer hat on and trying to investigate, triage this problem. Context is everything. So that's where these tags can really support us in trying to figure out what the root cause was, how to solve these types of problems and prevent them in the future, right? So we can take a look at what the user saw at the time of the crash. So that's super helpful. 
Um, we don't want to have to, you know, reach out to other teammates and dig ourselves. We want Sentry to kind of do that for us. So that's what's uh, available here. Now the stack trace, we've mentioned that a few times. That is deobfuscated, as you see here, uh, with some highlighting. So in red, we have our uh, uncovered code, uh, or we have testing that's done on our code. And some of that testing is not covering part of what we see in the stack trace. Now, if we didn't have um, our st stack trace deobfuscated, where we would see something like this. And that's something that I think we're all a little bit familiar with. Uh, what's nice is having the exact line of code and also the context around it. We can open this line in our GitHub repo. So understand that in the context of uh, our greater code base. Now, uh, this is super helpful when it comes to triaging and figuring out what the problem is, of course. But just to add on to the context, we have our breadcrumbs. So this is the timeline of activity that led up to this error. We can filter by other things, including HTTP, request details, user action, other things that help us figure out what led up to this error. Now, we also have other ways to uh, provide guidance because that's the gist of what Sentry uh, is meant to do is we are an opinionated uh, technology and we want to point developers to the right direction, including with the context that has been captured, including user information, device details, et cetera, also the view hierarchy, but also with some AI suggestions, right? And this basically tells us there's a problem with um, our, our a specific function that is related to our backend. We can support more um, triaging with, with uh, a try catch and adding details there. At the end of the day, with what we've captured here, we also want to um, explicitly mention, hey, we can provide a, a pointer to who might be best able to uh, help solve this problem. So that's in suspect commit, as you see here. Um, this does a, a git uh, blame. It, this hits the git, git blame API, rather. And we can uh, figure out with the help of uh, me, I suppose, <laughs> uh, what the root cause could be. Now, that's the first bit that I wanted to review. The second, that initial slowdown, we can take a look at what has been surfaced as a performance issue. So Sentry is able to uh, capture span and operation details, do some pattern matching against that to understand performance problems with like uh, things that happen on, that are affecting our main thread performance. So this is an example of that, where we have our file IO on main thread performance issue, the offending operations that are related here, breadcrumbs as we see and in tag information, those key value pairs to add context to understanding this greater issue. So we have all those details available here as well. Now, just to peek into uh, the performance information that's, that's captured, we can take a look at not just the offending spans, but the greater uh, transactions. So the, uh, the request that happened when we did, or when we started the application. So here we have our waterfall view, and these are the uh, time spans for these operations. Now, what we can do is also take a look deeper and we can put our magnifying glass uh, against this transaction and take a look at the function level details in, in terms of the uh, this flame chart to give us some function level uh, operations that have been happening. And what we uh, can, I guess, adjust is a view for system versus application frames also by recursion. So this is just a peek into how we can get into the nitty gritty, but also expand out into the summary or greater um, context of this transaction as a whole. Now back to the opinionated bit, Sentry, with Sentry, we can also take a look at uh, our suspect spans or suspect tags. So we're trying to guide our user to 
uh, understand what operations may be most uh, most likely the culprit. So that's with the suspect spans here and also tags that can be problematic. Those key and the values associated with those keys could be uh, contributing to some slowdowns. So that's uh, the gist of it. And we've kind of taken a look again at those two problems that slow app start and also that checkout operation uh, with the help of Sentry here. All right, I'll pass it back over. Hey, thanks for the awesome demo. Let me share my screen again. Honestly, if I had this workflow, when I was working with Android back in the day, talking about like 10 years ago, I would have, I would have been much happier. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, Simon, for this awesome demo. Uh, I'd like to bring up Oscar now to talk about his experience of using Sentry in his app. Hello, Oscar. Hey, Lassa, how are you? All right, so uh, tell us, let's start with your, like just your general experience, right? Like, for example, how long have you been a developer? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, so I get now to properly introduce myself. Um, so yeah, I'm so I'm Oscar. I'm co-founder and CTO uh, at Spin Tennis App. Um, I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, probably over 20 years now, and I started doing mobile development uh, as soon as I think the iPhone came out. Uh, so yeah, I've been doing native um, iOS and native Android. Uh, and then just recently, like, I've, you know, as you've seen, like my, my point of view is going to be very React Native uh, uh, focused because that's what our application runs on. So, um, so yeah, I I worked at a few startups before this, um, and that's where we're doing some Android and iOS native. But so yeah, also experience you know with bug tracking and the painful experience of solving all these issues. <laughs> Awesome. That's awesome. And uh, tell us a little bit more about the Spin Tennis app. You mentioned something that you, you started at like 2020 or something. But yeah, when tell us again, when did you first launch it? And who are your users, basically? Who's using it? Yeah, well, yeah, well, it's a bit of a of, of, of a cool story. I'll be, I'll make it quick. Um, so I was working on, on something similar even before that, I was working on my own sort of thing, you know, as a developer, I had like this side project while I was working on, uh, while I had my my job. And then uh, Ganesh, my co-founder, he had also been working on Spin. Uh, so we have different backgrounds, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm technical and he's more like on the business side. That's how we met and we decided to sort of team up and, and, and focus on Spin. So Spin is uh, the, you know, it's the easy, fun, and enjoyable, way of playing tennis uh we've basically made it very simple to just go out and play um and it's a freemium it's a freemium service uh it's basically free to just go find uh, and and play friendly matches you know with people uh we make it easy you just say who you want to play where and when and you kind of guarantee to get a match depending on where you are of course uh and then we have the premium offering which is uh the leagues uh which we run all year long and you know are very fun and um we have a rating and a ranking and a competition format that's uh, you know very friendly and not not crazy competitive. So, um, you know, mostly focused to towards uh, you know weekend warriors and and those players that are not highly competitive like uh, like most recreational players are. Uh, and yeah, we're uh, at the time we're mostly uh, in London. That's uh, we have um, about. 16,000 users registered um and uh yeah we're mostly operating in the UK and London is where, where where most of our users are awesome thank you so how do you how do you know that you guys are delivering good customer customer experience right what do you measure yeah, so that's a it's a difficult one. I mean, that's a you know we're a small small team, small startup still, you know, in kind of in a growth stage. Uh, hoping we got product market fit covered. I think we are at, at the growth stage, and we are definitely uh, growing. So uh, there's lots to do, but not 
that many people to to work on it so we have to you know wear a bunch of hats i think for us uh, it's we're very very focused on retention you know uh, especially uh, with the leagues i think that's like kind of our, our key product where we we we've, we've seen there's a it's a really good uh, kind of cycle there where where people you know join for free they join the leagues and they stay and or, or they join the league and they realize they can also play the other one so uh, as as long as we can keep retention high then we can worry later about you know the other stuff like stuff like conversion rates and uh but if we can if we can make a really good product that's what we're that's what we're sold and, and obviously you know uh crash free and 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 all this uh bug related stuff is is very is uh very much directed uh towards that as well um as i was saying for us it was our experience almost came from like having zero visibility to having some visibility so at a time where where you know that's when that's how we met when, when my, my my co-founder was, was struggling you know with a buggy app and, and a lot of people were saying oh the app crashes these app you know we're not getting really great ratings at the time and some of these ratings were like the app crashes so at the time where this was the thing to focus on because we were we didn't even have people using the app because of the pandemic that was the perfect time to focus on on, on okay let's make sure it's not crashing because that's the number one thing uh so that's uh at the time where that was important um we were able to focus on that and you know now we are much more on top of what's going on you know before we have very vocal users and before um, a user comes to us, we're able to see it, you know, when something happens and obviously we want to keep, um, you know, fatal issues to the minimum. And so, but yeah, we're very product focused, but when it comes to, to the tech, we're obviously, you know, we don't want crashes. And so that was the first thing we, we, we focused on was let's take care of this. Uh, and, and it worked, you know, immediately we, we had a, a higher quality and we were able to focus more on the product, which is what everyone wants to do. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, tell me, you, you previously, you mentioned that you used Crashlytics previously. Uh, what are some challenges that you had with Crashlytics? And how did you came to the conclusion, you know what, we need to choose a different solution for this? Yeah, well, that's a... Uh... It's not a straightforward answer. Like I've I've known about Crashlytics for a while. It's been around since forever. You know, and you mentioned uh, years ago. I also remember like 2009 or something. I was working on on my. I had an app at the time. You know, when people actually paid for apps, <laughs> so you could you could have apps. Uh, so I had I had my app, and I, I it was an iOS app at the time, and and I had remembered Crashlytics when it was Fabric, and it had this little like kind of UI. So I remember that from them. Uh, for, from back then um and they're always kind of a go-to tool so um and even when i had my 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 native apps that's kind of what i what i what i used i think for us the the main thing again this is very going to be very react native um focused it's when we had this urgency of what's going on what's happening just crash analytics just wasn't telling us uh so it was so obviously it's going to be a different experience for android and ios developers i'm sure uh, it's not going to be as extreme, but for us, it kind of was, uh, for us, it was like, we were just getting like random errors of like, you know, the, the, the Android o OS or the Android SDK, and that's not clearly, or the activity, you know, and obviously because there's only one activity in, in, in React Native that doesn't tell you anything. Uh, so it was like, that was the, that was the, the point that was like, we, we need to get information about what's going on in the JavaScript. And it's not enough to, you know, just wait for a user to say, this is happening. Oh, please tell us what's going on. Oh, how does it, that's just going to take forever. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and we were able to finally get that visibility. So that, that was the thing that was basically going from zero to, to 10, you know, in, 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 in no time that was okay. Like, yeah, we, we're going to choose century and uh, the, I guess something that I that I also uh, an example that I can use, you know, that, that also applies to us, and that the whole when we're talking about the free uh, option, and um, you know, sometimes it it could seem I don't know counterintuitive to have two tools to do something, 
But I think in 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 tech, it's that's it actually very common. It's actually sort of desired, you know, to have the redundancy to make sure that uh, data uh, is the same, or or you can see whether one's failing and the other isn't. Like we use, we do the same, for example, for um for analytics. You know, we use Amplitude, and we also use Google Analytics, so Firebase as well. Uh, so having the two is usually a really good idea to just be able to compare at the time and then while you have two then then you're able to say uh yeah look this is one's definitely not showing me this or this one's not not showing me that uh, so when we were when we were when he had we had them you know uh one next to each other and we were able to compare we were definitely uh you know it was easy to say yeah century is giving us more information and a lot of what simon was showing uh a, a lot of that, you know, we I don't have time to just go and configure uh, breadcrumbs and configure all this context. And like we have, like I said, we are very product focused. So we want to make sure we're building the right product, not the right bug tracking thing. So that kind of just, it, it was there. So it was, it's nice to have the breadcrumbs. It's nice to see like if for, if for some reason the source mapping failed or uh, we still have the context from the breadcrumbs, we still have a bunch of context from React Navigation that I didn't set up. So that was, that's all very, very useful. And, and it's, it's helped us, it's helped us many times. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And uh, how was your, how was your experience getting started with Sentry? Yeah, to me, well, I, I kind of always go back to our experience on Spin and, 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 and it's been, we, we've had a few conversations uh, with, uh, with the Sentry team, and you know, I I see a lot of a lot of parallels. Uh, it, it it's funny. Um, we also have this conversation when talking about our competition. It's like what like how do we differentiate? And you know, to me, I'm kind of that user where I'm not much. I mean, user and also entrepreneur, I guess. I'm not much into features, but what what is something that you can actually do significantly better? Uh, so I'm I'm very much not into features not like i'm not gonna say you know what the breadcrumbs are this thing or 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 the fact that i can assign it to someone is, is the killer thing for me it's like it's more like the experience uh, as a whole you know uh, i think the the 10x experience is kind of there when, when the, the aha, aha moment for us or for me because i was setting it up was okay this this was just installing uh this was just installing a dependency and and I, I'm immediately seeing, I'm just building the app. It says Sentry uh, source map upload completed and now I can see everything. So so to me, that's that was like, that has been the, the, the main thing. And, 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 you know, after that, once you get that, yeah, we, we've had some, some problems where uh, suddenly something stopped working and then we had to upgrade but that now now that you have that that experience from the beginning that you know that it's that it works then you can uh, spend some time uh, you know fixing some things but but to spend time i'm pretty sure like if i if i if i wanted to or if i could probably get with crash analytics to where we are but i would have to spend I would have to invest time on that, right? And again, I don't want to. I don't want to invest two weeks or I don't know how long to get the source map correct and the stack trace correct, and uh, you know, go through the GitHub issues and comment and see what's going on. And uh, it's just, it's better when it works. <laughs> so I mean, not that it doesn't work, but that that's how it was for me. It's just like that moment where okay, it's working. I don't need anything else, and it's and it's and it's been very helpful. Uh, like I said, like it's in, we we have cases we have very vocal users, uh, because you know, in the comp it's a competition, so people are very worried if if, if the score doesn't go in as as they as they as they said or or the standings don't update uh, as soon as they play the match. So so we are lucky that we get feedback uh, constantly. So um, and and we've had many cases where you know before the the WhatsApp message or before the email comes it's there and we know and i i know so it's like okay yeah I, we know what it is and we know who it's what's happening to and so it's it's um uh, it's it's really great to have that you know like that early early alert that something's going on and and yeah it's uh, absolutely necessary awesome that that's good to hear 
And how does how does Sentry uh, basically help you deliver that good customer experience you just talked about? Like, have you seen any more specific measurable like improvements since integrating Sentry into Spin? Um, I don't know about measurable. I have to be honest. Like, you know, like as a small team, we are not crazy on. Oh, you know, we have to keep crash rates at ninety nine. I don't know, like ninety nine point nine percent free. Uh, we're not that um uh, concerned about that. What we are definitely concerned is like, let's not have any um, you know, any fatal issues or anything or, or anything bad. I mean, we are. I think we have a, a decent testing process where. And, and and well, this is very unrelated to Sentry, but we have a bunch of developers here. So, you know, test driven, you know, always be test driven. That's that helps us a lot uh, to just not be in a position where, you know, with with mobile development, it's really hard. You you push something and, and it's broken, then you then it takes you a day, and then you have to run after. Please accept this. Uh, so, so it's 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 really it's really painful, but it has helped us identify things that I, I don't think would have been very easy, you know, or almost impossible to identify. But this, this is basically what happens when you have a good a good bug tracking solution. At some point, I remember um, we had an application non-responsive issue um, and we were getting some people saying, you know, the app stops working after this, the app stops. So it was, it was, it, that was a difficult one to track down. Uh, but then we were able to narrow it down, you know, with like, you know, some of the filters, okay, it's application not responsive. It seems like it's just Android 13. Uh, it seems like it's Samsung also because we were, so so we were able to narrow it down like that. And yeah, it turns out that, you know, that React Native version, I think 0 0.69 or something that had had like a serious issue uh, with 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 virtual lists um, and, and and some specific use cases. So. I mean, we were able to track it down like that, and then we were into the GitHub issue, you know, and we, we just, uh, that's the kind of thing where, where where, where it helps you deliver these better customer experience where you're, 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 where somebody comes with an email and then you're, you're able to say, look, we know, we know what's going on. It's this and, 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 and it'll be solved like this instead of like, again, oh, please, we need a screenshot. We don't know what it is. So that's, that's, it's, it's. So much better for the for the customer, even though they're experiencing, a, a, they're having a bad experience. When you when they hear, oh, okay, they know what it is. They're 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 on top of it. it it's 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 a whole different situation. So yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Oscar, for for the quick Q and A. It's also pretty good to hear about your experience. Of course, I'm sure. Thanks for the invite again. Awesome. All right. So uh. I got three interesting things to share with y'all uh, about other clients, other apps that use Sentry and where they're happy. So first one is Relief. Uh, this is a mobile app that lets you track and share your biking, hiking, and running activities. They have 15 million happy users and they keep them happy by ensuring that their app is stable and that it delivers the best user experience. And guess what? Sentry makes it super easy for them. Uh, then we get Planet Wild. So every month, Planet Wild goes on a mission to reverse the damage human activity has done to the world's ecosystems. And these missions are made possible thanks to the community backing them through a membership. Um, in the center of their whole uh, operation is the mobile app, which is the best place to browse their missions to learn about uh learn more about their initiatives uh and also to vote on where they should focus their efforts next and we also got a former google engineer that worked on crashlytics and they tweeted that they picked sentry over crashlytics in a new app that they're working on called jaxel i checked out jaxel it's a, it's a pretty cool app it's a privacy focused phone calling app that makes it cheaper to do international calls and protects you from spammers and unknown callers. So yeah, getting started uh, with Sentry is, is easy. Uh, if you're running with Android iOS or React Native, it's a matter of just running uh, one command in your terminal, the one you can see on the screen. This is basically the Sentry wizard. It's going to scaffold the whole... Uh, installation in your project 
if you're not using uh, these technologies, we've got plenty. You name it, we got it. You can visit uh, docs.centra.io slash platforms to see all of the platforms that we uh, that we support. And of course, um, you can create an account. It's free, centra.io slash sign up. If you prefer QR codes, scan this one you see on the screen. And do we have any questions? Let's see. I saw that you guys answered 11 questions. That's cool. We've got one from, uh, oh, there we go. Simon answered it. Yeah, uh, I've been kind of on the side here, just taking a look <laughs> at the Q&A and knocking them out. But yeah, hopefully that doesn't derail you on your side. No, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, uh, people got their answers, hopefully. Yeah. Well, okay. In in this case, um... Lazar, before we yeah. wrap up really quickly, I think just uh, one of the questions I thought was really interesting um, from Christian is um, what are some tips or suggestions that you have when it comes to app data logging in Sentry or just basically collecting enough information um, from the user's perspective to troubleshoot issues? And so I wanted to touch on that a little bit and maybe even yeah. Simon you can chime in here via your experience as well. So in terms of errors, like breadcrumbs is a really big one. It gives you context for the before um, and after for what you know users have done leading up to an error and a little bit of context after. Um, tags is a big um, player here as well, being able to see kind of what device class, what device, what OS version, which release, which screen, um, which particular subset of users, and in some cases, even which thread, like main or background. Um, so thread awareness is is kind of imperative in terms of determining how important uh, this issue may be. And then if we head into perform, uh, before I head into performance, for visual context, um, something like screenshots. So being able to see kind of like what your users saw at the time of the crash is is something that, you know, you won't really get across in any platform, especially in Crashlytics. And it's also a big help in terms of understanding your user's experience, your user's perspective at the time of the crash. Um, if we head into performance a little bit, um, being able to surface user-centric met uh, metrics like TTID, which is time to initial display, or TTFD, um, and being able to drill down into those metrics uh, for root causes and samples, that's a big help in terms of understanding user flow. And then finally, if you're really looking for that like code level, like what did my user experience, profiling is essential here. It gets you down to the function call. It gets you down to your code in terms of what did and didn't work. Um, Simon, I don't know if you had anything to add here. I just thought it was a really good question. No, that's a great question. And it does touch on a lot of the different ways that Sentry can uh, be used to, to surface details at different levels and in different contexts. What I would point people to is um, a blog post that, that Monday.com released about their use of Sentry. And this was a project that um, a colleague and I worked on together with Monday a little over a year ago, but a lot of the details still are very relevant. And I'll just post a link in chat. But I can also, if you don't mind, I can share my screen and just kind of walk through it real quick. I'm just yeah. going to do Don't that. Mm -hmm. So this is the um, blog post that I've linked in chat. And the this is a, a little outdated, but um, it does still play off of the fundamentals of Sentry. So it doesn't include like profiling that we released recently. Um, and this is in a web context. So nothing uh, related to the screenshots. Doesn't incorporate replays, which is another new feature that we've released. Regardless, um, the important things to get started with, I would say, uh, are still valid here, including tags that um, Zoe, you mentioned. We want to enrich our errors and our events with important key value pairs. What they did at Monday is uh, they, they used feature flag tags, tier type as well, last action. Uh, in terms of breadcrumbs, when they used that was more in the context of getting that meaningful timeline, right, leading up to the um, the crash or the slowdown, around the slowdown, rather. 
So those details are uh, available here as well. Now, they also talk about other related topics, but just wanted to just give a glance to everybody here about this blog post and how this does touch on the fundamentals of how you can incorporate Sentry uh, with, with some of these features that we have. It can be um, a manual lift, right? Setting those tags yourself, but it is, I would say, worth it. So I'll leave you all with that. All right, thank you, Simon. And yeah, we're pretty much at the at time even. Yeah, this is the end of our awesome workshop. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I hope we answered most of your questions. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining in for uh, bothering Zoe and Simon with your questions. That was good. And also like to thank our friends, of course, Zoe, Simon, and Oscar uh, for taking the time to do this with us, for answering all the questions, uh, and for the awesome demo and for the awesome presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, if you have a minute or two, please stick around, do the survey. We would really love to hear what you think of this workshop. Again, thank you, everyone. And yeah, goodbye. See you in the next one. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, Lazar. Thanks, Oscar. Thank you. Bye.